When do people feel free, united and independent? For the Latvian people, it's when they're celebrating through song and dance. For the last 150 years, the country on the Baltic Sea hosts a traditional song and dance festival. There are people who simply can't live without this festival. I'm crazy about music. It sustains me. It's in my blood. Alina's from Russia. Arman's is Latvian. Two cultures in one country. Politically, a difficult relationship, but irrelevant at the festival. Here, they are all one people. But before the grand finale concert, the participants must practice, five years long, twice a week. They rehearse traditional songs with roots in folklore, but also in professional music. For Russian singer Alina Igusheva, these melodies opened a door to Latvia. In 1998, she took part in the festival for the first time, although she was still living in Moscow, but Alina's ancestors came from Latvia. I'm actually Latvian. For my mother, it was important that I keep that part of my identity. When I was seven, she took me to the Latvian embassy in Moscow, where there was a Latvian Sunday school once a week. Whenever I was there, my mother was singing in the choir next door. That was my introduction to my heritage. Later, Alina herself sang in a choir, and when they went to Riga to perform, she fell in love with the Latvian capital. In 2014, the Moscow native moved here. Today, Alina teaches at a Latvian Russian elementary school. After the lesson, Alice and Sofia are going to learn poems in the auditorium. In Latvian, okay? A quarter of Latvia's population speaks Russian. In the capital, Riga, it's about 60%, so clearly a majority. Alina says she builds bridges between the two cultures. There are Russian children in the class who went to a Latvian kindergarten and can speak the language fluently. But for others, Lettish is hardly ever spoken at home, and they have it harder at school. What singing is to Alina, dancing is to Armand's. It's part of their identity. Armand's Pridots grows sea buckthorn in western Latvia and once a week takes a three-hour drive to dance rehearsals in another city. Armand's family lives on the coast near Riga, but the 52-year-old farmer only spends the weekends there. During the week, he works here on his own sea buckthorn farm. 30,000 shrubs must be tended to in the summer so they can bear fruit in the fall. We finally had some decent rain yesterday. We really needed it. The first proper rain since spring. Sea buckthorn is Armand's second passion. After dancing, of course. After his studies in economics, Armand's worked for a bank for 20 years, albeit unhappily. Today, he is happy in his day-to-day, -day, content that his path led him to farming and dancing. When my sister and I were little, our parents took us to Liepāja for dance lessons. Back then we had to drive 10 kilometers to rehearsals. Dancing has been an integral part of my life ever since. The farmer belongs to the generation of Latvians who still remember the Latvia of the past. The Baltic country was part of the Soviet Union for over 50 years. Although the song festival existed in those days too, some songs were banned. 
During the collapse of the Soviet Union, millions of people across the three Baltic states demonstrated peacefully for their independence, and they sang songs, including those that had been banned, in the so-called Singing Revolution. Latvia's freedom was a hard-fought battle. There are many songs about it. They've become a fixed part of my identity, too. I can't imagine myself without these songs. The socialist past is still visible in many places in Riga, until one year ago, including its towering symbol. The Victory Monument. For years, the sculpture was revered, especially by the Russian-speaking population, as a commemoration of victory against the Nazis. However, it was despised by many others and seen as a symbol of Soviet occupation. When Russia started the war against Ukraine, it became a symbol of Russian aggression against its neighbor for many. Finally, last summer, it disappeared. But the war did not. It's still present in people's consciousness, as is the solidarity of the Latvian people with the Ukrainians. For months, Latvia has been taking in thousands of Ukrainian refugees. Not all of them stay here. Many move on to Western European countries, and some return to Ukraine. Armand's family has also helped. Twice they have brought Ukrainian refugees from Kyiv here for a few months, two women with their children. They arrived here in Yomala on the Baltic Sea via Poland and Belarus, which is close to Riga and where the farmer's family lives. We drove to the border. The women's husbands drove their families to the border on the other side. Then the women and children got into my car, but the men couldn't cross. Then they stayed here in Yormala. According to the latest poll by a Latvian research institute, more than 80% of the population supports Ukraine's fight for freedom against Russia. But as much as Latvians condemn Putin's war, it hardly seems to have affected their friendly relationship with the Russian people. The people there are not to blame for the war. They're not Russia's problem, it's the leadership. The civilians can't influence much at the moment. They lack the courage to stand up and say something. But for us Latvians, it also took years to get this far and regain freedom with the singing revolution. Alina too says she doesn't harbor resentment towards the Russian people for the war. The fate of her old homeland, Russia, does not leave her cold. I always felt sorry for the country, the country, not the state. I always liked the people better than the state. When I lived in Russia, I was actively involved in the opposition protests. At some point, I realized it was hopeless, unfortunately. Nothing changes at the state level. When I understood that, it made me want to move even more. To Latvia, where singing and dancing aren't just hobbies, but the foundation of Latvian identity. For one week, the Song and Dance Festival has the country on tenterhooks. It begins with traditional parades through Riga's old town and concerts by the best choral and dance groups, chosen in advance by a jury in a competitive selection. and ends with a grand finale concert in Riga. For the last few days, Armand has been rehearsing for this intensively. Along with nearly 30 other men in the auditorium of his old university in Yelgava, where the traditional art of dance has been cultivated for generations, by both students and graduates like Amans. Nice, 
I have other hobbies, but dance has been my companion since I was five or six. My family supports my hobby. My wife doesn't dance, but the children do. The whole family is happy, so I am too. Not only happy as a father, but these days also as a member of a massive singing and dancing community from Latvia. It's the grand finale in a park on the outskirts of Riga. Just before their joint performance, Alina and Armands get to know each other in person. Hello. Hello. Alina. First time here? No, I've been coming since 1998. I've been here many times too. Every five years we can't wait. And then it's here, this beautiful concert. Now we want to share our joy with others. It's just a pity it will all be over again so quickly. You can immortalize an image on a photo. You can burn music on a CD. But what you can never capture are these feelings. The performance with over 30,000 like-minded souls, playing to just as many enthusiastic listeners, is truly one of a kind. Around 60,000 people celebrate their homeland at a festival that has been declared an intangible cultural heritage of humanity by UNESCO. They sing into the early hours of the next day, a 10-hour celebration of hope, confidence and support.